on the piece of loose leaf in front of you, I just want you to title it math 11 slash 2. Okay, we are almost done with division. You guys know how to do long division, but in fifth grade, oftentimes our divisors aren't pretty divisors. Okay, they're double digit, um, just harder numbers to work with. Okay, so that's what we're gonna focus on today is these harder problems. As long as you know the process of long division, you can do the harder problems. You just have to slow down when you're making your list, okay? So we're gonna work an example together. We are going to do the problem, just write example, seven, nine, four, eight, two, divided by 77. Okay, and oftentimes when we miss these, these numbers are so big that our brain doesn't even comprehend if they make sense or not. So I'm gonna give you your quiz back that you took yesterday very, very shortly, okay? And you're gonna have the opportunity to correct it if you choose to do so. But some of your answers, if you left off a zero when you did a double drop, your answer is off by a whole digit. So if your answer should be close to like 1,000, you would have gotten an answer closer to like 100, okay? So to figure out a ballpark answer, what could we do before we find the actual answer, Rory? Um, like 77, just We're gonna have to make our list, you're right. Waylon? Estimate. Estimate. What is the purpose of doing an estimate? Caleb? Uh, to make the yeah, it, it's an easier problem where we can see about where our answer should be. So tonight's homework, you're gonna have five of these ugly problems. For each of those five ugly problems, you're gonna have to find the estimate first and then the actual. Once you find your estimate and your actual, you should look at them and think, are these close to each other? If they're close to each other, you're probably correct. If they're nowhere near each other, that means you probably need to go back and I would check your estimate first because that's the easy one to fix. If you're like, yep, my estimate's good, then you might have to go back and rework the ugly one, okay? So we're gonna walk through that whole process. So let's start with our estimate on this. Our estimate, when we are estimating, where do I look first, Brennan? Am I 77? Okay, what would we round 77 to? Uh, 80. 80. We round it to the nearest 10. Okay, so I'm dividing by 80. After I change my divisor, Aubrey, where do I look? You look um, at the first two numbers of the... Of the yeah, the first two digits. I don't care if it's a six-digit number or a 12-digit number. Just the first two are the important ones. Waylon, we're trying to come up with multiples of eight that are close to 79. What are you thinking? Nine times eight is 72. What's nine times, what's 10 times eight? Is that closer? Okay, let's change 79 to 80. How do I decide how many zeros I need behind that, Myla? Yeah, and again, that's why I like to underline the 79 so I know, okay, I changed 79 to 80 and then I didn't touch one, two, three numbers, so I add one, two, three zeros. I'm gonna go at, now it's a mental math division problem. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up vertically because I've noticed you guys miss them less when you set it up this way. 80,000 divided by 80. Cam, what work can I show here? Okay, what is 8 divided by 8? 1. Okay, what else do I need to do? Okay, because I only have one on bottom, so I can cross out one set. East and G, where do I get the zeros for my answer? When you're done um, crossing it out, you get the zeros that are left over. Yeah, I have three zeros left over, so I do one, two, 
three zeros. Under this, let's write EST colon 1,000. What do you think that means, Brennan? I was just going to say for the um, 80,000 divided by 80, mm -hmm. um, that's the bonus 80 thing. Divided by 80 yep. So Brennan's saying, could you do this? Is What is 80 divided by 80? One. One. And then how many zeros do you have left out? Three. Three. Yep. Still get the same answer. What does EST stand for, Dylan? Estimate. Our estimate is 1,000. Okay, under this we're going to write ACT. What do you think ACT stands for, Arabella? Actual. Actual. That's the one that takes a little bit more time. Okay, so my suggestion is before you start working, what are we going to make? Noel? A list. A list, okay? Raise your hand if you know your multiples of 77 off the top of your head. Okay, 77 times 1 is probably about all we got, right? So, repeated addition is probably your easiest way to make your list. Or you could go out to the side, do 77 times 2, 77 times 3, 77 times 4. I'm going to show you the way when I do a repeated addition list, how I do it and just organize it. If you like it, use it. If not, you can do scratch work out to the side. I do it kind of all in one big list with these larger numbers. So, next to that work, let's write times 1. And I'll kind of change colors, too, to show you. What is 77 times 1, Callie? 77. 77. And I'm going to only go up to 4. With the bigger list, go up 3 to 4. You can always add to it if you need to. OK? To show repeated addition under that, I'm just going to show plus 77. When I get my answer, that'll be my times 2 answer. So I'm going to write times 2 equals, and my answer will be next to that. 154, because 7 plus 7 is 14. I'd regroup. 14 plus 1 is 154. Okay, then under 154, I'm going to add another 77. Now, this is a step where people usually rush. Why do you think I highly suggest you slow down for this step, Dylan? Yeah, and this is... Is this part of my answer, this work that I'm doing right now? Yeah. No. no, but is, it dependent, is my answer dependent upon these numbers? Yeah, so even though it's not part of my final answer, it's a very important piece of the problem. Has anybody done that math yet? Yeah. Okay, what'd you get, Drake? I got 231. Do you guys agree? Yeah. Okay, because 4 plus 7 is 11, 1, regroup. Uh, 7 plus 5 is 12 plus 1 is 3. Regroup, 231. Okay, let's go one more. So plus 77. So my times 4 answer oops, is 8. 7 plus 3 is 10. Regroup, 308. And again, can we always add to our list if needed? Make sure you're writing down everything I am, because that's these are the important pieces, but you have to know where they're coming from. Okay? Now it's time to do the actual math problem. And again, hopefully that list makes our life a little bit easier. I'm going to make it smaller so I have room. Okay, so we are going to do 79,482 divided by... 77. Do you have a question? Okay, wait just a sec. One thing I noticed on your quiz is that some people placed the first quotient number in the wrong spot. So then they like dropped this 2 twice because they knew they needed a number above it. And so when you get your test back, if you missed one, look for stuff like that. Look for did I drop the same number? two times because how many times can we drop those numbers one. just once okay but a lot of people who did that it's because they put their first answer quotient number above the seven noel how many times does 77 go into seven it doesn't 
So where do we look, Colby? If 77 doesn't go into 7, where am I looking? At the first two. Colby, how many times does 77 go into 79? Just once. So I put a 1 up there. 77 below it. That's 2. Pause. Why am I pausing? Not yet. I bring up, I pause. Is 2 smaller than 77? Yes. 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 Yeah. Now, let's talk about what our difference here could be. What is the highest difference I could have, Aubrey? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the highest answer to my subtraction problem that I could have here and it would still be OK? Um, be... Easton, help her out. 76. 76, OK? Now, here's why we don't like that, because we have a leftover of 76 and then we have to drop a whole nother number. So that means we're figuring out how many times 77 goes into like 700 something. Okay, but two is a nice pretty small one. We're gonna drop our four. Michaela, how many times does 77 go into 24? Zero. Zero times, so I have to drop another one, but before I drop another one, what do I have to do? Make sure the 24 is below the No. Mm -hmm. You said the answer, but this is on the quiz. Lots of people goofed up on this, so I want to make sure I point it out. Audrey? You have to put your zero in the answer, and then you double drop. And again, that's a visual. When you look at your homework today, or your quiz today, look and see, do I have a double drop in my problem? If you have a double drop in your problem, you should have a? zero up in the answer. And we're going to talk about the answer making sense in just a second. Now we have to see how many times 77 goes into 248. Milo, where are we looking? Um, times three. Times three. We already have our list right there. So times three. Three times 77 is 231. We have 17 left over. Emma, is that okay? Why is it OK? Because it's less than 77. Now what? I drop my 2 all the way down. Easton G, how many times does 77 go into 172? Yep, just two times, because that gets me 154. So I put a 2 up there, 154. Regroup. 12 minus 4 is 8. 6 minus 5 is 1. So down here where we wrote actual, I'm going to write my answer right next to my estimate. Here is where I decide, does that actual answer make sense? Is 1,000 close to 1,032? Yes, so my answers are close, which means they make sense. If I left off my zero in my quotient, which is a common error, what would my answer have been, Noel? Yeah, it would have been 132 remainder 18. Is 1,000 close to 132? No, okay, so that's kind of our cue. When you're working these tonight, if your estimate is nowhere near your actual, that means you probably goofed up somewhere. Mm -hmm. Colby. Wait, so I dropped down, when I dropped down the 4, 77 did not go into 24, so a 0 goes above that. And then I dropped down the 8, mm -hmm. and that made 248. But under, yeah, down so I just dropped, see my one arrow dropping down? So I just dropped down one number there. Okay, what I want you to do next is draw a squiggly line. You are going to start your homework on this piece of paper. We have something else to do before you start, but I want you to write homework page 269 slash 270. 6 through 15. 
okay, which is 10 problems. How many problems did I tell you you have for homework? Five. So under that, I want you to make a little asterisk and write choose five. But what are you finding for those five problems? So estimate and actual. So I'm giving you a little bit of choices here. I'm letting you choose which five. I don't suggest go through and pick the five smallest divisors. Okay, if you want to choose the smallest divisor first, if you're not real confident with these, start there, but then try and challenge yourself a little bit. Okay? So that will be your homework that you will get to start very, very shortly. Okay? Up here on the whiteboard, I have a task list for the rest of class, which is about 25 minutes. Optional corrections on your quiz. I'm about to give your quiz back to you. On this particular quiz, I did not give partial credit. Okay, because there's a million different places you could mess up and it's really hard for me to rate which mess ups are worth how many points, okay? So what I do on long division is I give you an option to correct it. We spend a lot of time fixing our mistakes. Each problem was worth one point. There were 14 questions, so what was this assignment out of? 14 points, okay? So if you missed one, when you get your quiz back, it'll show that you got a 13 out of 14. If you fix that mistake, what's your new score going to be? 13.5 out of 14, which doesn't seem like much, right? So I made a chart for you guys to show you exactly what your new score would be and your new percentage if you do corrections, okay? It's nice, neat, color-coded. When you get your quiz back, the first thing I want you to look at, let's say you got an 11 out of 14. What letter grade is an 11 out of 14, Callie? C, because it's purple and C is purple. 11 out of 14. You really only missed three problems, right? How many points will you get added back if you fix those three problems? Noelle? One and a half. One and a half points added back. What will your new score be, Noelle? 12.5. 12 12.5 12 out of 14. I just want to point this out. You're only adding 1.5 points but you started here and you would end there I want you to notice the jump in percentages okay points and percentages are not the same thing so if you get one and a half points added back it would take your score from a 79% C to an 89% B and that's a really high B okay now corrections are optional. I highly, highly, highly suggest you do them because let's say you just missed one and you got a 13 out of 14. If you fix that one problem, 93 is like an A minus. It takes you up to a 96, which is a good solid A. Okay? So I'm going to bring this back up in just a second when I pass out your quizzes. Here are kind of the expectations if you're choosing to do corrections. Okay, you'll get a half a point added back if you fix it appropriately, and you follow the steps below. You'll get out a piece of loose leaf, you'll title it Division Quiz Corrections, put your name at the top, and just redo the problems you missed. So if you just missed number three, you'll write number three, show all the work, staple it to the top of your original quiz, turn it back in. If you choose not to do corrections, or if you got 100% the first time, you can't get any better than that, you can just put it in your binder. Okay, now, on the problems that were, the answer was actually greater than, less than. Do you think that's what I was actually checking? No, what am I checking? The work, I'm checking your estimate, okay? So, on these ones, it's not just put like number six, if you had that one, you put that and turn it in. You have to work out the problem, not just the 50-50 guess on the answer. Does all of that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to bring the grade sheet back up till everybody gets a chance to kind of look at where they're at and where they could be, and then I'll bring this one back up so you have an idea of what you need to do for corrections. Corrections are due before you leave this room in 20 minutes, okay? 
once you get your corrections done, if you would like to work with a partner on the homework, partner, not group, on the homework, you can. That is for class time, not study hall time. Okay, and it's really just to bounce ideas off of. If you get stuck, you have someone to ask questions for, too. Does that all make sense? That's lots of information. Okay, I'm gonna pass out your quizzes. If you want, um, well, I'm gonna get your quizzes out. 